Hi everyone and welcome to the channel and welcome to another episode of Learning FreeCAD for Beginners where we're teaching the fundamentals of FreeCAD whilst we learn workflows. In this video we're going to reverse engineer a fan impeller from an STL file. So this STL file, let's just show that, has been imported by downloading it from the internet and importing it into FreeCAD. We're going to basically take this as a guide and create it from scratch. I'm going to show you a way of doing that without converting it to a shape and then convert it to the body and refining it. I know it's a very simple object. We may want to rebuild this from scratch if we was gonna make some modifications in there and we want to tweak some of the design. So I hope you find this video useful. And let's go and have a look how we will reverse engineer something like this. If you like what you see and you want to donate to the channel, then you can do so via Ko-Fi or Coffee at ko-fi.com forward slash M-A-N-G zero or via PayPal at paypal.com forward slash paypal me forward slash darren b e stone i also run a patreon where you can get early access and additional content and that's at patreon.com forward slash mango jelly solutions links can be found in the channel header on the about page or in the descriptions of these videos so this is the file we're going to be using it's available for thingiverse and it can be downloaded from here download files and it's a bathroom fan as all simpella so we're going to load this into freecat after extracting the zip and we're going to use an approach in there to reverse engineer it rather than convert it to a solid. So in FreeCAD we can either use the file open and we point to the STL or we could use the create new and import. So just create a new file and go up to file and import and we'll just load the file, the STL and you just import in there. Now, one thing that I like to do is come up to the view and toggle the axis cross. And this gives us a placement of the STL. So when this was exported, it was exported with the point of origin at this point. So if I try to transform this, right click transform, you can see that well, we're right over here. So when we do our modeling, I like to fix this. Now I can turn this into a solid if I wanted to by coming over to the part workbench, clicking on the fan impeller on the left hand side here and come up to part, create shape from mesh and sew shape and hit okay. That will give me a shape. We'll just hide the fan impeller by clicking on it and pressing the space bar. Click on the fan impeller 001, the shape, go up to part, create a copy and refine shape. That will convert it to something that we can use and reverse engineer. But I'm going to do it a different way because I used this in a previous video. So I'm going to show you a different way. Let's take the fan impeller and just delete it. Delete the other one and bring back the original STL. As you can see, when I hover over this, we've got no flashing. And what I've done is come up to the edit preferences and I'll turn that flashing off. This is the pre-selection. So we click on the display and the colors. We've got this enable pre-selection highlighting. If this was enabled and I hit OK, then each time I hover over this, it will flash. And it's not very good for demonstrations. So I'll just turn that off. Edit preferences, come to display colors enable pre-selection highlighting and hit OK. We could even change it to a different color. So we've got our fan impeller. What I'm going to do is create some cross sections because I'm going to rebuild this from scratch. To do that, we need to come over to something called the mesh design. Because this is a mesh, then we have some tools in here that I can use. This one here is cross sections. Also available from meshes cutting and come down to cross sections. This will place a cross section along a plane. So we look on the left hand side panel here, you can see we've got the different guide planes and I can add a cross section in there like so. I'm going to create multiple cross sections and we're going to increase the count and place it on both sides. All this allows me to do is create cross sections through this model at different points. So I'm going to increase the cross section up in counts. 
So I've got a number of them and I've got a cross section going, which is important going across here. This one here goes across here. Let's add some more. And it gives me an idea of what the model looks like at different cross sections. Let's hit OK and what you'll see there will wrap around the model and we'll see those going all the way through this. We get the dimension of this circle, this circular base. We get an idea of where these fans start and end. And this section that's taken out, if we look at it, we can see basically this is a sphere that's been removed from in here. So we've got to deal with that as well. So now we've got the cross sections in. Let's hide the fan impeller, pressing the space bar. So we've got this. We could say loft through this, but I want to rebuild this from the ground up so it's fully configurable. Let's have a look at that axis cross and see where it sits. So the axis cross sits over here. If I was going to reference this in a sketch, then I really want this centered. To do that, I'm going to use a draft workbench and I'm going to center this fan impeller. Let's come over to the draft workbench. And I'm going to use the move tools in the draft workbench. First thing is I'm going to click on top and set my working plane. Coming up to the utilities and select plane. And we've got the working plane on the top there. So you can see it on the top. I zoom out, you can see the plane is on the top. This means that when I move, it will be on that plane. It makes it a lot easier to move. We want to move this to the center. Now this is where the snapping comes in. If I click on my fan and pillar, we can see all these snap options. And this is also available from down here. We've got snap options down here. So snap lock, we can turn that on and off. And we've got some selections down here. This is the one we're looking for, this one here. This has got all the snappings we need. We're looking for the center point. Now, if I take that fan impeller and come up to the modifications and come down to the move, we can select where we want to move this from. So you can see the snapping is kicking in. Now I want a center point on this circle here and I'm not getting that. So I need to do something with this to allow for a center point. Let's hit close. Now there's a little trick here that I'm going to show you. Let's come over to the sketcher. I'm going to select top and I'm going to create a sketch. So normal sketch, I haven't selected anything. Let's create a sketch. X, Y plane on the top. I'm not going to create a sketch here. What I'm going to do is import some geometry and I'm going to import these points on this circle like so. And perhaps a point over here. We'll create a circle in here. I've got the auto constraints on, but what I'm going to do is come out and I'm going to hit escape to get the mouse pointer back and take each of these points and this circle and use a point on object constraint. And this will tie down this circle to the diameter that we need. So what we've done is fix the geometry underneath before it was a circle that was cut off that didn't have a center point to now being an actual circle that we can snap to. That means when I hit close, I can use that. So let's come over to the draft workbench. And this is where the trick comes into effect. Select top, we can see that circle there. If I click on the fan impeller, cross sections, not the sketch. And we've got the snapping. The snapping has moved up here. So the snapping is actually up here now. It was, if I move it back down, it was around about here, kind of along here. So I've got the snapping here. If I select that fan impeller cross section, modifications and move, then because I've got the snapping on, and I'm going to take these off just to leave the snap center. If I hover over this now and hover over this part of the sketch, notice where the center point is. So I've actually fooled, well, I haven't actually fooled FreeCAD in creating a center point. I've created a center point on that sketch. 
And if I click that now, I can move my cross section because I selected the cross section and I can move it into the center point and snap it to the center point there, like so. So now I've got this centered. The sketch hasn't moved. I've just used that as a way of moving my fan impeller. The sketch I can delete, it's gone into error anyway because we've moved this, moved it out of the way, let's just delete that. And now we've got this centered. Let's take the gridding off. Come back over to, let's go over to the part workbench. And what I'm going to do now is take the fan impeller and come up to part, and this is a compound, a splow compound. The reason why I've exploded it is because we get the individual cross sections now. The fan impeller is hidden and inside we've got the individual cross sections. So we can use these when creating our model and we can refer back to them. I'm gonna hide the more set for this one. So I want this one and I'm gonna press the space bar on that. I've hidden it. This is another little trick. See, I've hidden it. Select them all. We've got quite a few in here. Select them all. One's hidden. Press the space bar. And what's happened is that we've toggled the visibility. So all the ones that are visible have become hidden. And the one that was hidden, which was the first one I selected, is now visible. And we've got the circle to start with. Let's use a part design workflow for this. And create a body. And we're going to create a sketch along the XY plane and hit OK. And let's just check our body. If you find that, uh, well, you can see our sketch is there. If you find anything else inside here, that means you've selected it, create a body and it's pulled it in as a base feature. We can just delete that in there. So now I can work with this. I can say import this geometry now, but well, it's not gonna allow me to because it's external geometry. So I can't select that, it's outside. I can pull this in with a subject binder, but because it's simple geometry, I don't really need to. So we'll just create a circle in here and match up like for like, like so. And I can select that circle and create a diameter constraint. And it's, we know it's gonna be about 115 and hit okay. So we've got our first piece of geometry in here. Let's look at tasks and hit close. So that's our first sketch. And what I'm going to do is come up. I won't need this circle anymore. So I'm going to press the space bar and I'm going to bring back the fan impeller. It's going to sit by the side. Let's rotate this and have a look, see what we got. So now I'm going to pad this sketch. So the sketch that we created, this one here, select it and pad it. And well, we need to pad it this length here. So I'm going to reduce the length to say three mil. And this is going to be about two mil, isn't it? So we can use that there. So that's two millimeters and hit OK. So we've created our first part of the model. I'm going to hide the fan and click on it and press the space bar. Now that's come down. So we've got the circle inside our exploded fan impeller cross sections, which we've used. Now let's have a look at one of the others. So I'm gonna work my way through, just pressing the space bar till I get one that pops up on top, that's fine. This gives me a number of different geometries in here. So it gives me the fan blade. I'm gonna select the face of this pad and create a sketch upon it. So now we're inside the sketch, well, you can see that we've got the blades here. So we're gonna start sketching in these blades. Now it's worth thinking about how we're gonna create this build. Because we've got the dip in the middle of the sphere dip, I could create, say, the circle part and I strewed that up or pad that up, but it's gonna be removed via that curved surface, which will leave us basically spherical dip in this. So we're gonna do this bit last. I'm going to still create a circle in here. Let's create a circle. Come out and get ourselves positioned on the top. We'll move this out. I'm not going to pull in the external geometry because we don't need to. It's a circle, it's very simple. 
Let's use a diameter constraint of 14 millimeters. Now I'm going to turn this, let's click on it, and set as construction geometry. So I'm toggling that geometry to blue. That is construction geometry now, so that won't show up. We're just using it to link to. So we've got that in there. Now we're going to start using one of these blades to create the blade. While I'm here, that's pulling the edge of this circle. So pulled in the edge of that circle as well. So first of all, let's have a look to see what we've got. We're going to be using arcs in here. So I'm going to come up and use the end point and rim point arc. Now I'm going to connect up. I've got the auto constraints on the avoid redundant constraints. If you're on a newer version of FreeCAD, you'll find them in a little button here that you click and you can select from the drop down. So the later versions of 0.21. Okay, end point and rim point arc. Let's zoom out and position ourselves and we'll connect up to this arc and come out and connect up to this arc here as well. And we'll create an arc that comes out and sits on the outside. So we've got that one there. Let's do the same on this side with a second arc, connect up to the construction geometry and connect up to the reference geometry, point on object constraints and make an arc. So we've got the arc in there. Now moving arcs while they're like this, well, you can see that we can move it and it'll move up and down. But when we start connecting these up, it can be a bit awkward to get them into position. So that's create another arc in here from this point and this point. And we're not gonna make it tangent to that just yet. We're gonna come out and place it about here. So we've got a, an arc here and now we're gonna make it tangent. Take this arc and this circle and apply tangency. See what happens? They come together. Let's hit Control Z. What we need to do, if I start moving this arc in, you can see what's happening, they move in like so. We've got to stop these from connecting together like that. There are a number of ways of doing this. I could pull in external arc here, so this arc that comes around here, I could make a subshape binder on there. Or we had a distance constraint between these two. So taking these two and creating a distance constraint. 2.08, that'll do us. And then when we pull this arc in, you can see we've got more control over it now. And I'll take this arc and this circle and make them tangent. And we'll just add some adjustments in here. Let's do the same on the other side. Let's come over to the other side and add that in there. I'm gonna set some distance between these two. Well, first of all, let's get this in a bit more and decide where this is going to go, around about here and around about here. Take these two, set a distance, 2.81, that's fine. And set this one and this one and make them tangent, like so. We've got the tangency going across there. We can make some small alterations in here. So I can pull this in like so and decide where this is going to go. I'm quite happy with that. That's hit close. So we've got that in there. We can pad that now. So I'll select that sketch and hit the pad. You can see that pads upwards. Now this is where we need to bring back the STL file. So the fan impeller, the mesh, press the space bar. And we see that we've got the blade here. So let's go back to the task and increase the pad up. And we go all the way up to the top. And well, let's get in there. I think it's gonna be 23.5 myself. Maybe 24. Go back to 23.
That's it, hit OK. Once we've got that in there, let's hide the fan impeller. And press the space bar. So we've got our first blade. I'm going to leave these cross sections on view because we're going to polar array this now. To do that, let's come back down to the blade, which is the pad. It will select all of this, which is absolutely fine. This is just the action that's been fused to the underlying geometry. To come up to the part design, apply a pattern and hit polar pattern. And we're starting to polar pattern this around here. And we can increase this to the amount we want. So we've got eight occurrences and those sit across there like so. Let's hit OK. So the next stage is to create a dipped surface in here. So if we look back, this is the spherical negative space. If we look at that fan impeller. We've got a dip that comes down in here. Press the space bar. We're going to use the subtractive tools. So the subtractive primitives. And you can see that we've got a yellow cube here and a red cube. This is additive primitive, this is subtractive primitive. To use it, we select the face, and I'm going to come up to the part design, create a subtractive primitive, and come down to the sphere. It actually hasn't added it to that face, so where it's saying selecting, click on the face there, and that's placed it upon that face. See face two. And we can move this into position. First of all, let's give it some radius so i'm going to say about 30. and what i really need is to come in and have a look at some of the cross sections so i'm going to select the cross sections now this may accidentally attach those cross sections but we have to be aware of that let's take like the last 10 or so close there and press the space bar so we can see that and we see where the cross sections come out. So they're coming out about here. Come back to the task and see what we've done. So we can see by adding those, we've got wire, 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 which is because we selected them. Let's just delete those out and just leave the face two. So we've got plain face two and it sits there. We'll move this now. So if we come down to the bottom look at the Z axis. So we want to move it along the Z axis in Z direction and we'll move the sphere up into place. And actually 30 is around about right. So we can see where it intersects here. In Z direction of 36. And we've got fairly along the radius. And I'm going to hit OK. The subtractive sphere would have removed the material of all the blades to make it look like this. So we've got that sphere in there. Let's compare this to our original model, fan impeller. And if I'm not happy with this, I can basically come back into the sphere and adjust this with the radius. Let's come down to say, 29. So we're reducing the radius down there. And actually, I'm going to go up to 32. And you can see the points of that cross section. So we can adjust that, the height, etc., to places in the right place. So I'm just going to go with a 30. Another thing is that I'm not happy with this line that goes across here. Now, this is an edge that connects up the poles through the equator. That's made this extra face in here and this edge. So I'm going to come into the sphere and I'm going to rotate that. Look at the attachment because that's first angle and we'll just rotate that. And we'll see those rotate and hit the refresh, edit, refresh, control R. And that's placed that there. That's go a bit further. Control R on the Linux operating systems or Ubuntu operating systems. And that's now been removed. 
We just rotated that sphere around. We've got one final operation for the padding. Let's hide that impeller. Actually, we'll leave that there. We'll hide the cross sections. Just space on the cross sections. We've got this feature here. To do that, select the face and create a new sketch upon that face. And we'll say bring in some geometry. That's bring in the geometry of this edge here. Let's bring that in that pushes it onto that face, projects it onto that face. Sketch view section to create a cross section view there and create a circle. So create a circle and I've got the auto constraints on so I can connect up to that point there. So this point just connect up there and we created our circle. It's constrained against that point. Let's close that. We've got a circle in there and what we're going to do is pad that now. Take that sketch, we're using the mesh as reference and we'll pad. And well, we know exactly where this is going to go because this is going to come up to this edge here. So this edge, if you want to go to beyond, you can. But we can come into the direction slash edge, come down and select reference and we'll select an edge as reference. There we go. So sphere edge 107, that's not really worth, that's select normal. And just use the dimension in here. I thought that was gonna do the length of that edge, but actually it's just the direction. So I'm just coming in and just changing this a bit. So 6.8. Is close, maybe a little bit more. Nope, I think I'm going to go for that. Let's hit OK. So we've now got most of this done. We need the hole in here. So we've got this hole here. And this is up to you what way you want to do this hole because you may want a different type of hole in here. We've actually got a bit of a dip here as well. So I'm going to add that. Again, we select the face, new sketch, add the circle, come in, auto constraint to that midpoint, come out and set some dimensions on the radius 12.8. Let's close that. So we got that there. Add a pocket. Go for a millimeter. Click off and we can see that there. That's actually do 0 0.5. I think this will be for some kind of washer or something that goes in there. So that's there, that's it, okay. And now we can do the final pocket by selecting the face, new sketch, and add a circle. So come in, auto constraint to the center, add the circle, and this will be whichever type of connector you're using in here. So I'm gonna add a diameter of I say three mil and hit OK. We've got that there, close, and then we'll that's pocket that. And we can go say through all out the other side and hit OK. Now I'm going to come up and hide this loaded fan impeller cross sections, pressing the space bar, fan impeller, press the space bar, and we've got our model. So we completed our model. Now one thing to remember is because we've centered this, you can see how well that's centered. If we didn't do that and we started pulling in these circles, then we're going to get ourselves into a bit of a state. We may end up constraining this with it not centered. So this wouldn't run properly when we put it on a motor, it will have a wobble to it. And nothing will line up. So centering is very important when it comes to something like this. So you can save this. And one thing that I want to show is if we look at these edges, you can see this quite jagged edge. That can be fixed, that's just deviation. It can actually be fixed in the preferences. So we can set up preferences on the part design, shape appearance, actually it's shape view. 
and set the maximum deviation in here. And this will affect both part and part design, also draft. So we can set that in there. Or we can come down to the model. Click on the body. View deviation 0 0.05 and see how those edges are cleared up. And this makes it easier when we're creating the circular edges. It's a much cleaner model to work with. It just makes our life a bit easier and we can see the effect. So that's a fan impeller using the part design, importing an STL and creating cross sections. We learned how to center that. And that's one way of reverse engineering this type of item from an STL rather than going through and creating a shape from that and converting it to solid and doing it that way. So I hope you enjoyed that and I hope to see you again in the next video. If you like what you see and you want to donate to the channel, then you can do so via Ko-Fi or Coffee at ko-fi.com forward slash M-A-N-G zero or via PayPal at paypal.com forward slash paypal me forward slash Darren B E Stone. I also run a Patreon where you can get early access and additional content. And that's at patreon.com forward slash mango jelly solutions. Links can be found in the channel header on the about page or in the descriptions of these videos. I thank everybody that's donated so far. It really helps to keep the lights on so I can produce more content and also expand the channel. Thank you for liking, commenting and subscribing to these videos. And I hope to see you again in the next one.